All right, I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. Today what I got in store is a pack of Magic the Gathering Fallen Empires. Yep, some Fallen Empires. I've never opened up one of these before. I always thought they were interesting, how they never really held their value, and how accessible they are and how cheap they are compared to all the other packs from that area. And I thought, heck, why not open it on the channel and let everyone else see what's inside. So let's uh, check out the outside of this pack. First thing I notice right away, it's extremely, extremely thin. Why is that? Because these only have eight tradable uh, card, tradable game cards in it. A Richard Garfield game. Interesting old packs before like, uh, they put like, uh, I guess the reflecting material and it's like that plastic that you see on like the revised packs and stuff like that and legends and antiquities but no this is fallen empires this in homelands for some reason maybe it was the massive reprinting of all the sets the just how many cards i had out there maybe they just weren't the greatest cards and for some reason it never took off and you can still buy like a whole booster box for like 150 200 dollars or something like that which is pretty mind-boggling to me knowing that these are like what age are these from I think like 94 or something like that. What does it say? 1994. Wow, that old and they're not even that good. Yeah, so they're what, 23 years old? Pretty crazy. I hope I did the math right for that. Anyways, let's check out the outside. It says, you must have Magic the Gathering to play. Interesting. A lot of people are going to see this pack and be like, Magic the Gathering? It's right here. I can play. I don't know. It reminds me of like... A DLC or something. If you're gonna buy something from Steam, it's like, oh, you need the game, uh, you need the base game to play this game or something like that. Very interesting to me. Fallen Empires booster pack, eight tradable uh, game cards, deck master, a Richard Garfield game. Got the red pack, got the, the, I guess, kind of off white oval in the middle. Weird Magic the Gathering, kind of goldy looking. Got the Fallen Empire set. In the southern ocean of Domina, I almost said Domina, Domina Prime lay a, a contingent of great kingdoms far from the war between Urza and Mercia. The lands of Sarpedia proposed, prospered, but all the climate changed. Resources dwindled and empires crumbled. Hideous new species arose in the forests and seas, forcing the Spraldians to fight for their very survival. Recruit these toughened warriors and vicious predators for your duels. But beware, lest you fare no better than the Fallen Empires. And we all know the Fallen Empires fell really, really hard, and it's barely picked up. Let's uh, read all this stuff. Published by Wizards of the Coast, Inc. P.O. Box. I wonder if that's still the P.O. Box. Printed in Belgium. Contents, 8 tradable game cards. 1994, Wizards of the Coast. Magic the Gathering. Uh... Deckmaster and Fallen Empires are all trademarks of Wizards Coast, Inc. Wizards of the Coast. Cool. Interesting. Haven't seen that logo look like that in a while. Got the lighthouse there. Got like a reflection of the coast in the water. Got G and G Garfield Games. Red back as well. See the barcode there. And uh, yeah, I guess let's open it and see what's inside. Very like thin feeling pack. Extremely thin. I'm not even sure really what cards to look out for in uh, this set, but uh, we'll look at them together. We got a, whoa, Sivian Loot, a uh, priest. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Probably not. Very trippy kind of looking tail on it. It's holding like some conch shells or something like that. Really beautiful art on this set. And um, a lot of the art on this set's like, for this same card, there might be like three different arts or two different arts. I know this is one of those sets where there's different arts for the same cards. Maybe they try to get people to collect them more that way or something like that. Anyways, I thought it's pretty cool. So you could have a play set with different arts for each of them or two with different arts. And I think that's pretty cool. Anyways, uh, they're swimming through the water. Got some bubbles bubbling a bunch. Uh, it looks like he's reading. Oh, like those are like text or something like that. He's reading from the conch shell, not the conch shell, like the clam shell. Got very trippy kind of like tail. Got very muscly body. Who's this drawn by? Yeah, I was about to say, be like the shading and the muscles look like Ron Spencer, and it is Ron Spencer, my favorite Magic the Gathering artist, by the way. You see the sun kind of glistening through there. 
some ribbons uh, flowing through the water. He's got some interesting, that looks like some sort of conch shell. Or this way kind of looks like an eyebrow, like an eyelash or something. And uh, he's reading his scriptures, swimming through the water with his crazy tail. With a tail like that, swimming in the blue water, you're going to attract a huge shark and he's going to get eaten really soon. Anyways, uh, very cool. One and a blue. It's a summon merfolk. And it's a 1-1 one -one creature. There's the Fallen Empire's logo. This is before uh, rarities were like uh, just not painted uh, silver or gold or mythic. These are this is even before mythic and before even they painted uh, the color of rarity. It has two blue tap target creature may not be the target of spells or affected until end of turn or affects until end of turn. Uses ability only during your upkeep. Hmm. So uh, stop a creature from being attacked by like a lightning bolt or something if you pay two and tap. Interesting. Early uh, Voldians worshipped Sivirium, goddess of the pearl moon. Later she became more abstract figure. Very abstract. So is that a chick? It's hard to tell. Alright, the next card is Thelionite Druid. Looks like he's pointing at his tree. His arm's almost in line with that tree's arm. The tree does have a little bit of a face on it. Maybe he's pointing pointing that tree to go fight somebody he's like I'm tired go in there tree tap out and uh, my camera's picking up on his face a little bit kinda interesting cape uh, really kinda basic background in there nice sky uh, kinda shaded blues and whites everywhere and uh, yeah really right away I see just like the lines and like the cape and then if you do tend to look at the back you do end up seeing a face in the tree which I do like because trees should have faces two and a green a summon clerk it is a 1-1 one, one creature, and has 1 and green and tap. Sacrifice a creature to turn all your forests into 2-3 two, three, green, 2-3 two, three creatures until end of turn. The forests still count as land and may not be tapped for mana if they were brought into turn this play. Because uh, if you turn them into creatures, they have summon sickness, so you can't tap them. Very cool. Interesting. If you want, uh, yeah, it pretty much turns his forest into people. This picture is actually really well done. That's what it does. He's like, all right, let's turn on my lands, all my force, all my trees, into two, three green creatures, two, three creatures, and uh, swing for some damage. Cool. So if you have a bunch of forests and you get this guy out early, one in green, tap. All your forests are two, three creatures until end of turn. You can attack with them. It's pretty awesome. I kind of like this, actually. It'd be fun. It'd be fun if he was an elf, and I put him in elf deck, but he's a clerk. Got a dwarven soldier. Wow, look at the art on this guy. Very cool. Really well done. Very, like... Kind of creepy looking, kind of ghostly. Looks like he's in some sort of cave or something like that. Looks like he's an old weathered man and he's just tired. Wow. You don't see art like that anymore in cards. Dwarven soldier. One in a red. Summon dwarf. It's a 2-1 creature. If dwarven soldier blocks or is blocked by an orc, it gets plus 0, plus 2 until end of turn. Let no one say we did not fight until the last... <gasps> he died. Headstone fragments from a mass grave found in Crimson Peaks. Hmm. Interesting. So, uh, looks like if he's uh, blocked by an orc, he gets plus zero, plus two, so it'll become a two, three if he's fighting orcs. Looks like he's in some sort of cave or something like that. Really, really nice art. Really nice shading. Kind of, I don't know, I just really like the feel to this picture. It's kind of, kind of just like, he's lost his soul or something like that and just wandering like some sort of ghost in some dark cave or something got stuff hanging from the walls got the moonlight or something shining on his face a huge beard and he's just got a blank look in his face cool you got a high tide oh that's a uh, wow that's pretty cool actually hmm. that seems like a not bad of a card it's an instant it's a high tide, one blue, and has until end of turn all islands produce an additional blue when tapped for mana. Very cool. Looks like this mirror folk is down there playing with the water. It looks like you can see the moon cycle flow above, and uh, it's like grabbing some of the water, making waves or something like that. Just kind of showing the high tide. Very interesting fish face, kind of like a line fish or something like that. And yeah, really cool art, really nice blues, really nice whites, really nice greens. Really like it. And it is drawn by Anson from 94. Illustrated by Anson Maddox. May Sivillin uh, and her tides favor you. Very cool, very cool. I feel like this card isn't very bad. Very awesome. 
Next card I got is a Javanelier. Ekaterin uh, Javaliers. One white for a 1-1. One, one. It is a summoned soldier. When Ekaterin Javaliers is brought into play, put a Javelin counter on it. Tap, remove a Javelin counter to have Ekaterin Javaliers deal 1 damage to any target. That's pretty cool, actually. So it comes into, uh, comes into the battlefield with one a Javelin. If you tend to tap it, you can say, all right, throw the Javelin at that creature, at that person, and have it deal one damage. But after it throws it, obviously it's going to have no counters left, and it won't have any more Javelins, so it can't do any more damage. So awesome. For like a one drop, it has uh, ability to do one damage right away. I mean, after summon sickness. Yeah, kind of a fun card, actually. That'd be fun. Get those out turn one. Just have it have like three of them do damage to one creature. Kill it right away. That's cool. Looks like uh, some really strong muscly guy in the desert or something like that. He's got like a sword on his hip. Got like his water bottle down there. Got a huge gel in his arm. You see something in the distance. Got like some ear protection on his head. And uh, he's ready to throw it. Ready to hit somebody. Cool. This is drawn by Edward Beard. <laughs> Junior. Cool. Fun card. Got an orc. It is a two and a red. An orcish veteran. Very cool art. Really like the colors. Kind of like muted a little bit, but I really like it. Very detailed. You can see like the layers and like his like hood and fabric like that. Blue arms. Got like some gems on his arm and on his like bangle. He's got like a glove on. Got like a stone axe in his hand. Got some wood spikes sticking out. Looks like he's protecting something. Got a shield on his back. Got some blues, reds, and purples in the sky. Beautiful sky. Protecting his land. Just looking out into the, I guess, the world. It's got a golden earring, and uh, this guy is just standing guard. It cannot be assigned to block any white creatures with power greater than one, and it has tap first strike until end of turn. There's a 2 2 creature that comes out. It's a 2 and a red to come out for a 2 2, and if you tap a red, it gets first strike, so it gets to deal its damage first. Interesting, really cool art, really like it. And I really like how the artist back then actually signed it on the piece so you don't have to look at the bottom. Quentin Hoover. Awesome, really beautiful art. Ooh, I actually got one. This is actually a card that I knew, and I wanted this. The Hymn to Torch. This is probably the best discard card in Magic that I'm aware of. It is two black, and it's a sorcery. Target player discards two cards at random for his or her hand. If that player does not have enough cards, and his or her entire his or her entire hand is discarded, that's awesome. So pretty much they discard two cards, and it's by random, so they could discard anything, <laughs> and uh, that's pretty cool. Just two, for two cards to be gone, and this is illustrated by Scott Kirshner. Really cool. Looks like a uh, little elf guy's playing at a table, begging this like. I don't know, some scepter, some like maid or something like that. Got like a coal, like a gold cup in her hand or his hand. Uh, it's got some dark figures in the background. This guy looks kind of scared, hunched over. This one's just sitting up straight tall, probably barely even paying attention to him. And he's like, please help me, please help me. And he's like, mm, I'll think about it. Drink from my cup. Got like a gold ore around him. Got his little green hand on him and his little tights. Interesting picture. Got the tablecloth more on this side. Looks like it's kind of falling out from there. Not sure what that means, but uh, this guy holds the power in this picture, and this one is kind of weak looking. Anyways, this is a really cool discard card. It's a sorcery for two black. Target player discards two cards at random free in your hand. And if they don't have enough, their whole hand is gone. That's awesome. And then the last card I got is a combat medics. Two and a white summon soldier. It looks like they're fighting on the field. This medic is healing them. There's like some someone in the background that maybe that's who she's like praying to or she's getting her strength from she's healing this guy who was wounded on the battlefield and uh got like the mountainscape in the background that they're fighting on are these guys fighting each other looks like their sticks are pointed somewhere else you got like the golden sky that kind of blends into this person's face back there this guy's kind of just slumped over a sword falling out of his hand and somewhere he was hit or something happened don't see any blood but he's hurt and this medic is healing her she's got the same mark on her head as that woman and uh yeah Summon Soldier. It's a 0-2 creature for a 2 and a white. It has 1 and a white to prevent 1 damage to any creature or player. Cool. We'd no sooner knock them back on their heels than a cursed sawbones would show up and patch them back together again. Cool. Really cool art in this set. And I'm really happy that I got, a, got this card, Him to Torch. 
probably the best discard card, and I do want to make a discard deck actually with the rats and stuff like that. And I feel like the other good card is probably the High Tide, and the rest of these just look pretty cool. Uh, there's not many, I don't think, heavy hitter cards in this set, and uh, that's why I think that these packs have kind of not weathered very well, and this is really a Fallen Empires of Magic. Anyways, let me guys know what you think. Let me know what you guys think about uh, this pack, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks for stopping by, and take it easy.